Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 Performance Center. And this differs a little bit from rifles you'll have seen on my channel before, mainly because this has a longer, heavier barrel. It's a fluted barrel and it's 458 millimeters or 18 inches long. Other features about this rifle which are very interesting, it's got a long M-lock handguard and you can put M-lock accessories on it and it's actually supplied with an M-lock adapter so you can put things like this bipod on it which I was using in the video you've probably already seen. It's still got Magpul flip-up polymer iron sights, iron sights I call them, they are polymer. polymer. These are superb, they come with a little tool because the front one is elevation adjustable and the rear one is fingertip windage adjustable. So you can set that up, easy to use, fold them away as and when you want them. Now you'll have seen it when I had the scope on it with a Picatinny rail adapter, that was on approximately there, so it wouldn't fit with them both on, so I just take, took this off. It's a simple screwdriver fitting, take the screw out, slides off the back, and it will actually retain zero if you need it to. But of course with it off you can use your scope on it, and scopes are probably what more people are going to possibly use these days. Overall weight of the rifle is 2.3 kilograms, which is 5 pound 3 ounces. Overall length is 885 millimeters, which is 35 inches. Length of pull goes all the way down to 260 millimeters, which is very, very short, 10 and a quarter inches, and then extends out to 343, which is 13 and a half inches. Probably most people are going to use it to that, maybe slightly lower, but you know, junior shooters, people like that, makes it a very versatile gun to fold down shorter. And of course, this dates back to the military heritage where if you've got armor on or something like that, rucksacks, etc., you might, you know, put it down a bit shorter. And of course, it also makes it short and portable for carry. Speaking of carry, it comes with QD sling stud adapters. So the QD sling stud anchor points, sorry, are in the base of the stock here. Pop those in there and you can see the lever there for changing length of pull. When it locks in place, it locks in place longitudinally. There's a little bit of wobble on it, but that's kind of par of course with any kind of AR-15 derived rifle. This one is a total polymer unit. I'm not going to pop the pins out and flip it open because that tends to upset YouTube, but essentially you push the two pins out of the action front and rear, or you can just push the rear one out and it will hinge open. But if you do want to separate them both, push the front one out as well. That allows you access to the trigger system, the hammer, etc. And of course, being a 2-2 rimfire, you do get quite a lot of firing debris from the cartridges as well as wax and oil from the projectiles themselves. So, you know, cleaning these is part of life with them. Looking at the magazine, it comes with a 10 round magazine. Now to be fair, nine rounds go in there very, very easily, but the 10th round does require a really firm push into there. And interestingly, I used some ammunition, I used some Hornady ammunition, which was a more dry, waxy lubricant, which was easier to load, whereas some SK ammo, which had quite an oily bullet, was actually really hard to push in because you tended to just slip over the top of it. But you can get larger magazines for these, and of course, spare magazines make it a much better usage for fast fire situation. And if you look at the orange follower on the back, that actually locks the bolt open on the last round. So it's got two little buttons either side, so you can ease the spring tension off when you're loading it. They do work better if you, if you don't pull it down though and drop them all in because they tend to misalign a bit. But if you just ease that spring tension as you're pushing them in, it works beautifully. Talking of the last round hold open, so there we go. This is an empty rifle, but that will not go forward. Now if I just drop that out, it's got usual bolt control. So if I close the bolt, clunk, that will shut there. If I pull the bolt handle back, push the bottom of the lever there, it'll hold the bolt open. Now, with the magazine in, I just drop that bolt. If the magazine was in, for example, we've been shooting, and then the last round, the action goes back on the blowback action, click, and it stays back. So you pop the magazine straight out, the button there to drop the mag, drop straight into your hand, next one goes in, and off you go again. Let's just pop that back open. 
Safety catches as usual, two position fire and safe, and the trigger is a two stage unit, 1500 gram braking weight, which is 53 ounces. It's actually quite predictable, quite usable, and I enjoyed using it. And of course you've got a hoe grip on here, which is AR15 compatible. It's nice rubber texture, it's got lots of stippling on it, and you've got pretty good reach to trigger there, so you can operate it smoothly. Let me just do a safe dry fire so you can see that. So, first stage pressure, bit of a squeeze, you get a tiny bit of creep on there, but it breaks very predictably because it's not too heavy at 1500 grams, so say 53 ounces. Plenty of Picatinny rail on top for adding a scope, accessories on the fore end if you want. Of course, as I said, there's the M lock as well. You can choose your sling solutions and things like that. The recoil pad at the back is literally just like a rubber, just a rubber cap on the end of the stock. That's just to grip your shoulder and lock in position. It's not really to absorb recoil on a two tier room fire because there just isn't any. The barrel is threaded half inch 28, so you can add a muzzle brake or a sound moderator, and I did put a sound moderator on it, because shooting subsonic ammunition, you get a beautifully effective, very, very calm, quiet rifle that you can shoot all day without irritating or annoying anybody, including yourself, and you don't need ear defenders, and it's very, very happy shooting and plinking fun. Specifically talking about the 18 inch barrel, you do seem to get the absolute optimum velocity from the rounds of ammunition. The Hornady ammunition is actually rated on the box at 1,070 feet per second, and I was averaging about 1,085, which is absolutely perfect. Still nicely below supersonic speed, you get lots of stability, no problems with transonic flight, and it's just effective, giving you the maximum power you're going to get without supersonic speeds from a 40 grain soft point bullet. Well, you can see the group shot on paper at 50 metres. I'm very happy with it. Some ammunition worked better than others. Hornady was good. SK Standard Plus was also good. Some of the ammunition types didn't seem to work well through it. But I will say this, a brand new rifle, and it was very, very effective. Um, I don't think I actually had a single misfeed or misfire in 150 rounds through it. And that was from brand new. So it didn't require any bedding in or any wearing in, really. So I was extremely pleased with that. There is a case deflector on the side. It makes sure they come out and they flick out of the way. So if you do happen to be shooting them left-handed, you're not going to get it coming back into your face. And I'm really, really happy with this rifle. I've always enjoyed 1522s. This one just has a slightly longer forward heavy weight bias to it, but actually when you're shooting it prone, you certainly don't notice it and you do appreciate that because I do think it's just a tiny little bit more accurate. That 18 inch barrel does seem a really good dimension both for harmonics and for harnessing the velocity from the powder burn in the cartridges themselves. Right, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell and make sure you keep track of my regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.